elephant, the largest and heaviest land animal on Earth, a gentle giant that has influenced history and to this day plays a sizable role in many cultures and religions. If its many unusual aspects, both physical and historical, could be found in an elephant's ceremonial garment or caparison, then this elephant might carry the story of all elephants. They have been gods, symbols of political parties, ancient toys, and beasts of burden in war and peace. According to Rudyard Kipling's story, The Elephant Child, the elephant's trunk was stretched to its present length by a crocodile. Now the elephant wins the largest nose in the world contest by a little more than a nose. The closest contenders, the elephant seal and the elephant shrew, come a poor second to our mighty pachyderm. But not all pachyderms are elephants. The term refers to rhinos too, and simply means thick-skinned. Although elephant skin can be up to two and a half centimeters thick, it's not their most distinguishing feature. As a famous poem reveals, when people call this beast to mind, they marvel more and more at such a little tail behind, so large a trunk before. The trunk is actually part nose and part upper lip, a mass of a hundred thousand separate muscles with the power to shake down a meal. and the precision to reap the rewards. In its search for succulent leaves, the trunk can reach higher than the tallest animal, the giraffe. Wielding a leafy fan, it can swat away irritating flies. With a 25-litre water capacity, it's a squirt gun that works best when it backfires. And with help from the tusks, the trunk can maneuver massive logs. When it comes to the dexterity and power needed to move this temple in India, the elephant has a head start. The trunk may be a wonderful device for breathing through, but we often imagine that it has other, more musical uses. Elephants belong to a family known as proboscidea, animals with a trunk. The short-snouted Moeritherium was one of the earliest elephant ancestors. Later came Dinotherium with its backward curved tusks for digging roots. Gomphotherium stood three meters tall and had a shovel-shaped lower jaw and tusk. Mammoths were the closest relatives of modern-day elephants, but were driven into extinction by climate changes and hunting. The first complete mammoth was discovered in 1799 by a Russian fisherman peering into a wall of ice. Mammoths frozen for over 40,000 years have been found in the icebox of Siberia. Some of the most impressive mammoth bones and tusks have come from the homes of ancient peoples. One of the last elephants to go extinct was the pygmy elephant from Sicily at only one and a half meters in height. A baby pygmy was smaller than a sheep. Perhaps it adds credence to the legend of the rock, a giant bird said to swoop down and carry elephants away. Only two species of elephant remain today, the African and the Asian. The average Asian elephant tips the scales at about 4,000 kilograms, give or take a comparison. An eight-year-old African female weighs in at 1,300 kilograms, but a full-grown African bull breaks the scales at up to 7,000 kilos. Another difference between the African and Asian is in the curve of their backs. The African elephant is saddle-backed, the Asian more hump-backed. 
But when it comes to the biggest difference, the ears have it. An African elephant's ears are much larger than an Asian's. However, where shape is concerned, the ear of the African and that of the Asian neatly illustrate just where in the world you can find them. A lesser known difference, but very significant, is in the grip tips, or fingers, of the elephant's trunk. The Asian elephant has one triangular finger at the end of its trunk and grips by pressing this against the broad underside of the trunk. The African elephant has two opposing fingers and because of this additional finger can pick up anything from a banana to a tiny seed. It can even turn the pages of its own story. With such precise fingers, it's no wonder that the Sanskrit word for trunk, hasta, is the same as for hand. And the Sanskrit term for the elephant means animal with hand. Elephants even greet each other with their trunks, their own version of a handshake. All elephants, except for female Asian elephants, can grow very large tusks. The longest tusks on record belong to the mammoth, curving up to five meters in length. Tusks are actually an elephant's front teeth, which continue to grow throughout life, though they're constantly worn down by activities such as digging. In this case, the elephant is digging for mineral salts, an important supplement to an elephant's diet. Just as people are right or left-handed, elephants are right or left-tusked, and the shorter of the two indicates which one does most of the work. For young elephants, tusk sparring is not only fun, but good training for future bouts. When they're adults, they'll have to fight other males for territory and females. Tusks can be lethal weapons. Some fights between huge tuskers can end in death. For the Perahara festival in Sri Lanka, tusks are sheathed with gold. The most unusual tooth is a relic in a gold box. The box is said to contain the actual tooth of the Buddha and is the focus of a huge parade with over a hundred elephants festooned in elaborate caparisons. The festivities continue long into the night, illuminated by torches and the hundreds of lights and mirrors adorning the elephant caparisons. One of the Buddha's most famous incarnations was as an elephant with six tusks, who agreed to sacrifice four of them to satisfy the greed of man and his demand for ivory. Elephants with four tusks and even seven have actually been recorded, the result of a deformity in the tusk root. Tusks grow about 17 centimeters a year throughout an elephant's life. And who knows, maybe one of this African's tusks will surpass the largest elephant tusk on record, nearly four meters long and weighing 107 kilograms. As well as inspiring awe, such tusks have also inspired greed. Why has elephant ivory or white gold always been so desirable? Ivory is easily carved. It's durable, pleasing to the touch, and until recently, readily available for the taking. Although ivory was used to make some of the earliest works of art 27,000 years ago, today's demand threatens the elephant's survival. Despite bans and the burning of illegally poached ivory, many elephants continue to be slaughtered to satisfy the human desire for white gold. Humans have long been the greatest threat to elephants, while natural predators, even the king of beasts, pose little danger to the combined might of the herd. 
Every elephant likes to throw its weight around and protect its territory against trespassers. This youngster makes a game of it with some noisy minor birds. Although an elephant's front teeth get most of the attention, it's their massive molars that put in the longest hours. They have two in the top jaw and two in the lower. With the wear and tear of almost non-stop eating, they go through six sets of molars in a lifetime. These voracious vegetarians spend up to three quarters of their day chewing, making them the biggest eaters on land. The poor quality of the foods they eat has to be made up for by quantity. An elephant gets through 100 to 200 kilograms of vegetation a day. Clearing dense woodland, they have been the biggest single influence in creating the open grasslands of Africa. Such monstrous appetites pay little attention to what is wild grown and what is cultivated. If anything, they prefer the tastier human produce, making them multi-ton pests to local farmers. If a farmer's crop is as high as an elephant's eye, a real one, it can mean disaster. Every year, wherever elephants live, they eat or trample over a hundred million dollars worth of crops. Who can blame the farmers for trying to drive them off? Elephants can be frightened away by fire and loud noises. But mice? <coughs> Just an old wives' tale. Given the elephant's size and strength, it's no wonder it was man's supreme war machine for thousands of years. Kings rode into battle and directed maneuvers from their state elephant. Some of the greatest military campaigns hinged on the use of these predecessors to the tank. Hannibal took elephants across Spain and over the French Alps in his attempt to conquer Rome. In 326 BC, Alexander's campaign to reach the Eastern Sea failed because his troops were terrified of the enemy's elephants. As well as the terror they inspired, they were the perfect platform for archers. As warfare evolved, anti-elephant soldiers used torches and spears to panic the enemy's elephants to turn them and send them stampeding back into their own troops. The driver of a maddened elephant would then resort to the ancient version of the cyanide pill, a mallet, and a spike driven into the elephant's backbone. Fortunately, this is only a nightmare of the distant past. With the advent of firearms 500 years ago, elephants were relegated to the supply lines. As recently as the Vietnam War, elephants were still being used to move equipment down the Ho Chi Minh Trail. It's the elephant's foot that makes it such a superior off-road vehicle. As well as being equipped with the original non-slip tread, when an elephant's foot lands, it expands to distribute weight and, like a good tire, grips more of the road. The elephant actually walks on its toes, its ponderous footfalls cushioned by a great squashy pad. The largest animal to walk on tiptoe also has a skeleton up to the job. Like a bridge, the elephant's spine supplies the load-bearing arch required to support its weight. The legs provide such a sturdy base that an elephant can sleep standing up. Surprisingly, similar bone and tooth structures make the tiny hyrax the elephant's closest cousin. 
but Hyraxes have never been known to enjoy a good game of soccer. At an elephant festival in Thailand, they love to show off their skills. Although they may never win the World Cup. When Thailand was still Siam, the sacred white elephant dominated the country's flag and religious life as well. Worshipped like living gods, they lived in palaces and enjoyed lives of pampered luxury. Baby white elephants were even suckled by human wet nurses. When a new temple was to be built, a white elephant was set loose to find the sacred site. As this statue shows, they're more of a chocolate color than white. They inspired carvings in gold and life-sized stone effigies that became the very foundations of a temple. In ancient Siam, elephants were also used as executioners. When the king declared in with his head, the doomed man was placed under an elephant's foot and crushed. In the wild, elephants rarely kill people. A mother protecting her young can be dangerous, but usually she'll just keep her body between her child and any threat. Being overprotective comes with good cause. A baby elephant spends 22 months in the womb, over a year longer than a human baby. At 90 kilos, they're the biggest babies ever to play in the mud. A baby's arrival is also important to the herd, which helps with babysitting and can offer a push when needed. With an average lifespan of 70 years, an elephant's childhood lasts as long as ours. It is a youth filled with much to learn. Adults to imitate. And lots of time for play. Elephant twins are extremely rare. They make up double the weight, they need double the milk to feed them, and they're double the trouble. A mother of twins would be unable to cope if it wasn't for the help she receives from the herd. Led by a dominant female, usually an old grandmother known as the matriarch, female elephants herd together in small groups of about 10, which also include calves of both sexes. The matriarch initiates the daily moves from the feeding grounds to the watering hole. As the family travels, the herd can swell as other family groups join the parade. Herds can grow from tens to hundreds in the course of a day. Being the oldest and wisest, and the one with the longest memory, it is the matriarch who knows best. Obedience to the matriarch is rewarded by her expertise in locating food, salt, and much needed water. Though she has the hefty responsibility of handing down her knowledge to her daughters, like any other elephant, she can't resist the opportunity for a swim. Just as elephants in the wild place their trust in the matriarch, captive elephants follow a new leader from the human herd. There's give and take in this relationship, for if the mahout were to forget to give his elephant a bath, it would almost certainly refuse to work for him. A good bath is only the beginning of an elephant's need for water. 
a drop in a bucket compared to the 220 liters a grown elephant can drink every day. As most elephants live in very warm climates, their great bulks are easily overheated. Water, shade and mud are all used to keep them cool. Even dust provides a kind of sunblock. Ears can help too. They have a thin skin and thick veins. When flapped, air rushes over the veins and, like a car's radiator, release excess heat. For thousands of years, elephants have been tamed and trained by people. African elephants have never trained as successfully as their Asian counterparts, few getting past the most difficult part of accepting men on their backs. Asians, by contrast, are easier to train and take better to being ridden. They can follow commands within weeks, quickly mastering nearly a hundred separate instructions, making elephants the most intelligent of all domesticated animals. One of the first things an elephant learns is to hold a rope, which this African elephant can manage easily. Keeping it there is a different proposition altogether. Though people have long thought the African elephant too wild to train, it may have more to do with the fact that Africa has never had the same elephant culture as Asia, where it continues to thrive today. In many remote areas of Southeast Asia, it's still more economical to use elephants than modern machinery, which makes them prized labor-saving devices. A well-trained elephant can cost from twenty to forty thousand dollars. Well worth it, considering the man hours that can be saved by these powerful and hard-working animals. In the West, elephants have paraded into popular culture, from Baba to the elephants of the circus. Some have even played nannies. In the East, with its long history of elephant culture, elephants belong to more ancient traditions. Hindus worship Ganesh, god of students, teachers and exams. And they fear Gajasura, the demon of destruction that can possess any elephant. The destructive rogue elephant is very much a reality, but there is a reason for its dangerous behavior. Must a glandular condition that affects bull elephants once a year. During must, they seek out females and may become extremely aggressive. Unpredictable behavior is one reason adult males are not tolerated in female society. Bulls may form loose herds, but they never approach the social complexity of the female herds. Some males set out on their own. And recently, scientists discovered that they keep in touch with the female herds by using sounds well below the human hearing range. Infrasound is generated within the swelling forehead and is so low that two-thirds of elephant communication can't be heard by humans. It creates ripples in the water by its vibrations and can be heard eight kilometers away. If two-thirds of what an elephant hears is below human hearing, then to an elephant, Tarzan must have sounded like a falsetto. Though elephant sounds can be measured, their emotions can't. Observation of their behavior towards elephant remains, such as these skulls, suggests that they mourn their dead and experience a kind of grief. Such observations have contributed to the romantic notion of elephant graveyards. But graveyard sites are most likely the result of weary and dying elephants seeking the one thing that could support their tremendous weight, water. Over the years, the corpses may collect in one area, giving the false impression of a communal death site. Bones aren't the only thing that elephants leave behind. They're nature's greatest producers of fertilizer, with the output of a fully grown elephant reaching 136 kilos a day. What appears to be waste to an elephant is just the beginning for many plants, animals and insects. Baboons pick at it for undigested seeds. Francolins find a nest in it, with central heating no less. Dung beetles derive their name from it, and they're so devoted to it, a pile of dung can be more dung beetle than dung. 
Not a bad thing since they take so much of it away. When water and food are scarce, elephants can teach us a lot about recycling our own waste. Providing the stuff of life for many dung-dependent species is only one of the services elephants perform for their community. Many seeds depend on elephants for dispersal and propagation. Everywhere elephants go, they transform and shape the landscape. They pull down trees, break up bushes, carve the rocks with their tusks, create salt licks for all to use, and with their broad feet, cut trails that may be used for thousands of years. This multitude of effects on the habitat has led scientists to describe elephants as a keystone species. And like the keystone of an arch, if the elephant were removed, then the entire ecosystem of the vast African grasslands could collapse. Elephants are even becoming the keystone of some human economies, such as the tourist industry in Kenya. In providing a solution to human needs, the elephant performs a role it has long played in Buddhism. For in Buddhism, the elephant symbolizes the bodhisattva, the one who brings salvation from worldly entanglements by sharing its wisdom. If the elephant does carry the wisdom of the ages, how appropriate then that in China, the phrase to ride an elephant is the same as the word for happiness. Mm -hmm.